Hi, Spoiled NYC citizens. This is Isaiah Cruz, aka Bella Noche, for Cocktails and Contours. I'm here with my very special guest this week, Miss Beverly Leslie So. Hi, everybody. So, Cocktails and Contours is this thing that me and Spoiled have created where um, we sit down with a New York City drag queen, whether they're famous or up and coming, and we get to know a little bit about them, their life, their passions, because there are so many things that go on in New York City nightlife, and you just don't know because, you know, who has time to get to know people? But we are here with them. We just got off my Facebook Live where I painted Miss Beverly Leslie Don't I face. look beautiful? <laughs> look at me. I look so, so friendly. You do look friendly. The eyes, they lift the face. Yeah. So we decided this because we think that more queens should not only educate each other about each other's styles and aesthetics, but educate you guys. But we always start off with a cocktail. And one of my side passions is making cocktails. So today we are doing a cucumber melon martini oh and one of my favorite ever flavors which I never thought I would like we're using a pinnacle watermelon and cucumber um, base for the martini and martinis are very very simple even if you don't have a shaker you don't really need that that much just have a stir and then we're using straight up ruby red cranberry uh, grapefruit juice excuse I have mine me. stirred thank you you have mine stirred yes and you pour you stir and the best thing about the cocktail is it's simple and it's really, really delicious. So, cheers to Cocktails and Contours. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to engage. And cheers, bitch. Cheers. So, we're going to get right into it. How do you like mm. it? She good. Give me... You good? I mean, one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So, this is a new initiative that we've started at Spoiled in My Sea. Everything's going to video. Everything's going live. So... If you like what you see, feel free to comment, feel free to share, feel free to ask us questions. We love questions. Um, so don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, motherfucker. All right, girl, so, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Um, so while she's doing my face, she's going to put her makeup style on me. I'm going to interview her, which will later be turned into an article that you can read on Spoiler NYC. Do you have your contour and highlight? So yes. Gotta get your colors right. Yes. Here's that. And then my contour's right in there. Work. And feel good. So, after we take another sip. I know, I'm like, I, I drink like a, a fish. <laughs> okay, it's, I, it's been a week. It's the, it's the second day back at work after the holidays. She actually has a very, so as you're getting started, she has a very special announcement to, to tell all Thank of you. the Facebook universe. It's, um, it was my last day in my day job today. I, hold on, oh God, what, hold on, wait. How do I want your cheeks to look, okay. It's okay, I'm there, I know what I'm doing. Um, it was my last day of my day job today. I want to move into, hopefully this goes well, because I want to move into doing makeup. It's really, I want to do like stage makeup for theater companies, but I'm also moving into glam like makeup for you know, regular everyday people. Um, so yeah, I quit my day job as a restaurant manager and I've got a contract with Bronx Opera to do to be their makeup assistant for their next production, which is congratulations. Be Thank you. It's really, really cool. Thank you. I'm thrilled. Thank you. Look right. Thank you. <laughs> She's uh, practicing already. Right. So this product we're using today is pure mineral concealer <laughs> in a dark shade of brown. <laughs> Well, it's interesting that queens use all different types of makeup, everything from Dollar Store and Dwayne Reed to the most expensive kind of Sephora brand and even like stage makeup. And everyone has their own unique style and that was one of the reasons why I started this. So if you were to term or coin what your makeup style is, what, what, what would you say that it is? Um, much like myself, my makeup style is versatile. <laughs> um, but I really think that I generally speaking aim for something that is very vintage inspired. Um, my some of my biggest makeup icons are Marilyn Monroe, are Twiggy from the 1960s. Oh, the yes. I love Twiggy. I think she's beautiful. I really, and I also I look I look more. I'm only now starting to learn about makeup history, so I tend to look more at starlets from the eras that I'm related to. So, like I said, Marilyn Monroe, but also James Jane Mansfield, who was like sort of a, a B-movie star. Mm -hmm. Lauren Bacall, who I think is stunning. That's, those are my jam. Where's your beauty blender? Uh, it's right, where did I put it? 
It you was here. It somewhere. It's here somewhere. It's I mean, here I can see a blip in my finger as well because I'm not you afraid. You can't. I mean, can't. Oh. <laughs> Folks, we'll find it. Oh, here it is. What about what about you? What would you say your makeup style is most <clears throat> inspired? I mean, you, I, we can see it on my face right now. Yeah, I yeah. I very much am a fan of bright colors. I like a lot of fantasy makeup. I uh, I turned like I very much into like the whole mermaid kind of look when that became a makeup thing. Like I've done the whole scales look and things like that. It's a lot of fun. So I'm I'm very much not afraid of color. Yeah. You know, all these girls like do neutral sets and things like that. She's coming like, for no. me. I'm like, nope, we're gonna pop it. Um, so when did you first get into drag? Um, I, so I studied opera, which a lot of people think is like stodgy and boring, but there's actually a lot of gender bending that goes on in opera performance. Yeah. Um, and so I, I was always super into like the queer aspects of opera. And then in college, I discovered RuPaul's Drag Race. It's, it's a, it's a gateway drug. It changed, it changed my life. Um, and I saw... Jinx Monsoon win season five, and I, I'm like a singer, so I was very inspired by what she did, and I was like, oh, that seems so fun, but I never thought that I could do it until I came to New York City, and I moved to New York to sing opera. The first year I was here, I did like seven operas. I worked with a bunch of opera companies. I was like mildly successful, but I hated it. Like, I was not happy. Why? It's a really good question, and I've never been able to pinpoint it because I love, I love, I love opera. Like, I listen to it. I watch it. I love performing it. But, like, there was something about the rehearsal process. Thanks, Chip. <laughs> and when Emmy's here, our other drag queen, Emmy Great, who was my guest last, uh, the last time I did Cogs and Contours, is just on, and she's watching from the wings and <laughs> has and having that. emotions. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a feeling emotion. R.I.P. Mariah Carey. Um, oh, God love her. <laughs> career and her voice. Um, but I, I, there was something, I really, if we're getting down to the nitty gritty, I think that I felt really pigeonholed by opera because right. so much of the roles you can play depend on your voice type and I as a, I'm a really young vocalist which means that I'm limited already because so many of the great like opportunities and the great roles go to older people mm -hmm. because your voice doesn't really mature until you're like as a man your voice doesn't mature until you're like 28 okay um which so I, I still got some time girl I still got like four There's still years hope for me too right right There's <laughs> still hope for you well no I'm kidding one year um <laughs> So I moved out of it, and I was like, you know what, maybe I should try drag. Drag queen Sutley Seymour, I was going to see her, like, every Tuesday at her Barracuda show, and she... It was a great show. Oh, it was a great show. Yeah, it was a great show. Um, and I got really inspired by her, and I was like, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. So I went out in drag for Pride. I wouldn't call it my, like, debut, because, like, I didn't know experiment. what the fuck... Yeah, it was, it was an, an experiment. experiment. And then I kept playing in my closet... Until December, I messaged a drag queen named Louvelle. Do you know Louvelle? I've heard the name, actually. Yeah, she's yeah. Brooklyn-based. She's great. Great singer. Um, really cool look. Needed the cocktail. No, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I was like, girl, where do I go if I want to perform? And she was like, listen, my friend Britta Filter does this show. She's going to have a competition. Do the show. Is this your highlight? That's my foundation. No, no, I'm sorry. My highlight is this work um oh my god this is really good when yeah. i was using drugstore makeup this was like always what i would go for i discovered this literally at a drugstore it's a revlon color stay and it says like they have one that's like that and one that's a photo effects it's it's full coverage it it's works really so good. well and i've a, a few queens that seem to like use revlon i was like yeah it's good and i try and they're like oh that's not bad yeah so it's really it's all down to aesthetic what you're using it for what you're doing like and you can look really great with drugstore makeup you, you can, can do it so like right for here. the aspiring drag queens out there that are still experimenting or the ones that like don't have the money to do like stage makeup do not be ashamed to go to the drugstore and just you know be a little selective but you can find really good stuff and there, not if, pay a, a shit ton for it if you want to use the revlon has this is a liquid which is great for some faces but if you want to use a slightly thicker foundation revlon also has the color stay whipped which is a whipped cream foundation, okay. um, which is what I used when I first started out. And it, it's really similar in texture and consistency to the Ben Nye, which is what I use now, which is stage makeup. Yeah, and Ben Nye is one of those like stage makeup brands that like you find it like three places in the city and you'll, you'll pay really good for it, but it, it works well. It's not even that really, like I, I paid for the Revlon Colorstay Whipped. I probably paid about $10 a bottle or a little like container. 
And for the Ben Nye, I paid ten dollars for one of the little pods, and it oh, goes okay. for a while. It's really not that expensive. Um, it just it's just a different use. You yeah, know what I mean, it's different use. And I have there is a difference in consistency. Yeah, absolutely. most of my experience is in stage makeup because I was in the opera world. <laughs> well, funny fun fact: I studied opera in high school, not singing, but just like studying the operas. Right. So when I hear you sing, I love. I've seen about twelve operas at the Metropolitan Opera House because my principal would get um, tickets for us to go see dress rehearsals. Work! So I've seen like 12 Metropolitan Operas. So when you do opera, it's just like, it, it takes me back to high school. And That's I love so it. so cute. Yeah, I love, I love it. Um, okay, so continue. So when would you think was like, when was your actual like debut oh, into track? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, so I messaged Britta, thanks to Louvelle, saying like, yo, message Britta and see what's up. And Britta was like, I have this competition in... I thought it was in December, but I looked back in my Facebook feed and apparently it was in mid late November. It doesn't matter. And I was like, oh my God, I want to do it so bad. Thank you. Um, and then I messaged her about a week out and I was like, hey girl, what's going on? And she was like, oh, the competition's fallen through. And I was like, oh, I'm so fucking bummed. And she was like, listen, you seem like you really want to do this. Why don't you just come and be a guest at my show? You can do one number. Um, what do you do? And I said, I sing live. And she was like, oh my God, that's so great at the West End. They'll love it. So I went in a flat ass fucking wig, in a terrible thrift store dress, <laughs> and I sang Getting Married Today from Company, which is a, yeah, a- It's a really hard song to sing. It's a really hard song. There are three roles in it. There's a soprano, a baritone, and an alto. I sang all three of them, um, and slayed. Like I looked like shit, but the audience was like, oh my God, yes! And that was it. I was fucking hooked. I was like, I, need, I have to do this for the rest of my life because it finally made sense. Like, I've been doing opera, I've been doing musical theater, and people were always like, wow, you're so good, but it was never like, oh my god, right. you're amazing. And I did this, and I thought I was the T, but like, I looked busted as fuck, but people like, loved it. And I was like, this, this is where, this is my people. Right. You find your calling, and when you find it, you kind of, like, I, I stumbled upon drag by accident. A friend of mine, as a dare, put me in Suddenly Seamer's first timer show. Yes. And I did it, and I got booked for a guest spot that night. Obsessed. And that's how I got started. So you just never know. And you just, you know, you say yes to new opportunities, especially if it's something that you can kind of, you know, get into and just try it. You never know what's going to happen. Can you look at me real quick? Yes. I made you so pale. So what? Because I'm a white woman, y'all. I like forget. It's okay. And I'm Puerto Rican. We're gonna we're gonna so, we're gonna work it out. It's okay. It's really cute. It's My really last cute. guest Emmy made gave me rich woman white woman fantasy too, so it's all good. We're this is cute though. It's gonna be good. How's it going over there? How's our comments? Hi Ramona! Work, sisters. I love that so many people are turning in and watching. It's so cute. Love it. Hi. Hi. Um, so what yes. was what was your when did you finally find your aesthetic? Because now you have a very, very defined aesthetic. When was it that you mm. I'm glad you i I'm glad you say that because I feel like my aesthetic's a little bit messy still. But there's a consistency when it comes to doing like vintage starlet glamour. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with it has less to do. Well, it has to do with what my voice can sing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm a singer, and I was studied classically. What I can sing is like that sort of. I can sing classical music. I can sing musical theater standards, and I can sing that sort of vintage crooner thing. And so I want my look to match. What I perform, um, so we're gonna use this lovely neutral set on all of your highlights. Um, so I have tried to find a sort of vintage aesthetic that I can go to, and now I'm trying to make it more modern because I want to I want to find a way to blend the vintage and the modern mm -hmm. because I have a bit of a modern sensibility in terms of like I'm very I'm a slut. <laughs> I was about to say I'm very sex positive, but like. The whole vintage like housewife aesthetic, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely like vintage pinup stuff that I can do, which is like super sexy. But like Violet Trotsky, who I'm really inspired by, is vi vintage without being dated. Archaic, yeah. Yeah, it's super, it's super updated. Oh god, it's so fucking hot. Yeah, I love it so good. much. It's no, she's she's. I mean, she won for a reason. Yeah. Um. So in your in your because you've been doing it for just about a year now, right? A year, yeah. Um. Does your family know that you do drag? 100% my family knows that I do drag. So, uh, 
being knowing and supportive is different. Is your family supportive of you doing drag? Yeah. I, so listen, I'm like super, super lucky when it comes to my family. I'm going to beat your face, okay? Got it. Um, I grew up in Kentucky. Kentucky. I've been to Kentucky. That is... Yo, girl. The, it is like the heart of the Bible Belt. It is this like... S even in like the cities, which I essentially grew up in the cities, it's like super rural. Even though I do very much like Nashville. Nashville. It isn't far. I just... When the same time I went to Kentucky, I went to Nashville. So I always associate the two, but... Yeah. No, I mean that Nashville and, and Kentucky... Like Tennessee and Kentucky right are yeah, very, very right. similar. Um, but there is a lot of conservatism. And I went to like a conservative Lutheran church... But, people like love what I do. They love who I am, they love what I do. Like people at my church ask about Beverly. That's like, awesome. Honestly, isn't it crazy? That's awesome. It's crazy. My favorite story is, so when I, when I came out of the closet, I, I'm gonna go in and powder your contour now. Um, when I came out of the closet, I was deeply religious and very conflicted. And so I wrote a, This is better. Can I do this? Yeah. Okay. Right. I wrote a, I spent two years writing like a long ass essay about why it was okay to be gay and a Christian. And I like s released it on Facebook back when Facebook notes were like important. I, I remember Facebook notes. Yeah. You guys remember Facebook notes? That was a thing. No one cares now. That was so a thing, but Facebook notes were a thing. You wrote, you, you released some shit. It was almost as bad as MySpace. Right, right. <laughs> now we just vague book, but back then yeah. we had notes, okay? We vague book um, and statuses that go on forever. So I wrote this long ass essay, which I'm really proud of still. Like I haven't read it in a while, but I think it's okay. And a I'm and a writer, I'd love to read it. I'll send it to you, girl. In September, my mom called me and she said, you'll never believe who was quoted during Bible service today. And I said, who? And she, they were, apparently were talking about homosexuality and some guy like, de like decried it and was like, homosexuals are awful. And my pastor quoted my essay and was like, not every Christian agrees. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy? That's, no, that's especially in the Bible Belt. Yeah. Like, I, have, I, have, I grew up in a very, very religious household um, and I have uh, both religious and non-religious friends here that have disappearing views, but I'm so, it's, I'm, we're so lucky, that has a lot of black on it. Mm -hmm. um, we're so lucky to live in a city where so much is accepted and there's so much love to be had. And yes, you know, no, no one's perfect and not, no city's perfect, but I feel like New York City has allowed for a lot of that progressive kind of ads, but it's so awesome to hear about that coming from the South. Yeah. You know? I mean, I feel like I, I am grateful that I grew up there, but I, I'm, I'm grateful that everyone's supportive, but I sort of had to leave to become who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And like, there, I, I, I was born and raised in New York City. Um, I was technically born in Manhattan, but I grew up in Queens. And, uh... Who's talking? Elizabeth. I think that's your friend. Oh yeah, Ellie Kilcoyne. Hi baby, mwah, mwah. One of my best friends, Ellie Kilcoyne is on. Hi Ellie. Hi Ellie, it's nice to meet you. She's so wonderful. Um, but no, so I was just saying, it's so great to see a level of acceptance, especially, like I was born and raised in the city and I grew up in such a conservative household. Rare to be, you know, growing up in, in New York City. city. Yeah. But, you know, so I can only imagine what it was like down there. But that's that's amazing. That's actually amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's there are like little bastions of of like liberalism in Kentucky. Yeah. Um, but the prevailing sentiment is not. And so I was really really blessed, really lucky. I mean, my parents like watched my videos of me doing drag. My mom and my grandmother came to see me do drag this summer. Um. um so yeah, Beverly and I were both in a. Uh, actually, I'm gonna say this: New York City's biggest drag competition that in, like, in that officialness and we were both semi-finalists in hey So You Think You Can Drag and it was kind of like because I had known her before we'd met before but it was like where her and I actually like became very much acquainted and very much friends Agreed. and uh, it, it gave back a lot so like I remember I remember meeting your mom yeah and it was just like it was very it was very very cool when like the parents come and they support it's it's awesome at least saying a lot uh, my mom's going to see you do drag. Kind of meet you. Oh no, Ellie doesn't. So I plan on doing the show in Kentucky when I was there next week. But I don't know if Ellie knows this, but 
the you have to get when you're producing an event at a public space you need to get liability insurance and I didn't know about that that's not a thing in New York so I can't do the event anymore because I can't afford to and the turnaround's too slow anyway right but I need a million dollars of liability insurance yeah which for a day is only like two hundred dollars but it's two hundred dollars I don't have and the turnaround to get it to happen oh, okay. is too slow for okay for the show next week well, that's unfortunate. But at least now you know, so the next time you go, you can be like, okay, we got this. Right, now I know. And I also know that through my parents' insurance, I'm eligible. It just, like, takes a while to, like, accomplish it. Right. So that's good. So I'm using three colors of powder for your contour, which is great. Right now we're going in real dark. You're going to be, girl, you're going to be carved. I love it. Because you've seen, you've seen my face lately yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, no, like, she's... Snatched. Um, so what would you say has been your most proud accomplishment in your drag career so far? That's a great question. Um, I think, I'm an interviewer girl. I know how to make this question. I think my most proud accomplishment is... So you... You know... No. I'm going to take this back. My most proud accomplishment is my reputation as a professional. Like, I, not everyone thinks that I'm amazing at drag, and there's a lot that I have to learn, but people think that... When I when I get to work, I work hard and I get things in on time. I would say that with you, absolutely. You know, that's so important to me because that's why I love working with you. Thank you. Because being good comes with time and education. Being professional is an Take attitude. Being professional is an attitude. It's so true. So true. It's so true. Speaking and of being professional, I should drink one of our cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great. Um, but no, and. Um, Now's your time where, because I'm, I'm, she's a very good friend of mine. I'm very, very proud of what she's accomplished. So now's your time of to plug your show. Where can, where can the New York Cityites oh. uh, find you? New York City, you can find me um, on Mondays at Albatross Bar in Astoria, Queens. That's 3619 24th Avenue. I do Broke Back Bingo, which starts at 9 p.m. It's a lot of fun, and she'll have me guess one day. So, don't worry. Yes. I need, I need to like get a guest scout together because right now I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck is happening? Do you want to guess this week? Okay, cool, great. Um, Gina, need, you need a flowchart. <laughs> I need a flowchart, absolutely. Next week I'm gone in Kentucky, but Gina Tonic is hosting. So oh, fine. Really cool. yeah. She was my first Cocktails and Contours guest. Yeah. And all the videos are available on my YouTube as well. Uh, Bella Noche NYC. If you want to see Gina Tonic, she's great. And she, we had so much fun. Yeah, so that's going to be really cool. And then on Thursdays, uh, you can find me and Emmy Great, who's been vocal in the comment section. And was very vocal in the comment section and has is no stranger to the spoiled NYC cocktails and contours. All my friends I work with. Um, we host Two Girls, One Talk at Boots and Saddle Drag Lounge starting at 10 p.m. on Thursdays. And that's in the West Village. Thursdays. It's a good it's a good venue that I performed there at a few times. It's it's fun. And I've gone to see the show. Hi Gina, we were just talking about you. Yes. <laughs> all good things, all good things. Um, now I'm gonna do your brows. Okay. Because I, I like to do your brows first so I can like get it's that so shape funny. down. It's so funny, we do things like very reverse. Like I always do eyes first. Yeah. And, okay, I mean, let's switch to sides so that we're not like completely blocked off like that. Okay, it worked. Yeah, I love yeah, it, yeah. I love it, I love it. Um, so you said your, your biggest accomplishment in drag is your reputation. What do you think is something that you want to accomplish in drag this year? That I haven't accomplished? Yeah, that well, you want to accomplish this year. So I haven't talked about this on, on like social media yet because I feel like it's a little bit controversial. But one of my goals by the end of the year is to be a full-time girl. That's a great goal to have. Whether it's through regular gigs or through private events. Like, I, I fucking love doing drag. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. So I want to I want to be able to do to it full do time. It full time. You know, it's a goal for a lot of girls. Not all girls can do it, but when you do it, you you do it and you work it out. I know a lot of full timers, and they work their asses off. Yes, it's not easy. Those, it's not. It's easy. not. It doesn't pay I'm not well. Full, we're not, we are not even full time, and it and it's hard. Yeah. So it's just one of those things that you. But that's a great goal to have. Absolutely great goal, and you've already taken a step to that with. Um, Today being your last day of official day job work. It's true, it's true. So no, that's that's great. I'm very I'm very very excited for you. Thanks, girl. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. What's been? I'll check in. Yeah. What's been your favorite place to perform so far in the city? Um, well, of course, Albatross is my original home bar. Um, like they gave me my first show. I performed there. I I started doing a. F anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like a long history. But that's where I performed the most. 
And I really Albatross, love Albatross. Albatross is a fun spar. Astoria, get it. It's a cute little dive bar. It's adorable. The, the, the crowd there is amazing. Um, I also, you and I both performed here frequently. I love performing at the West End. The West End. The West, the West End is my actual home bar. The West yeah. End is my bar. So we have an affinity with each other's home bars. I love it. It's one I of my it. favorite places to perform. It's like a cabaret venue. They have great sound. They have great lights. Like, it's such a privilege to perform on a stage like that. Yeah. So those are probably my two favorite places to perform. Where is somewhere that you haven't performed yet that you want to perform? I really want to perform at Barracuda. Because that was my debut, I performed at Barracuda. Uh, that was the first show I saw. It was Sunday Seymour at Barracuda on Tuesdays. I want to perform at Barracuda so badly. It's a it's a fun stage. It's a fun crowd. You just gotta watch out for that pool table when you're like walking in the back because people yes, stand, girl. People stand in front of it and you don't realize that it's there. And then it's just like, oop, that's a table. But that was my my drag debut was at Barracuda. Yeah. Um. Oh no. I will make you a new one. Oh god <laughs> damn it! I'm such a mess. Um, Miss Cracker and Tree Darling, if you're watching, I'll be available on Tuesdays for, for <laughs> oh, Knockout, Knockout Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah, which is a great show. I actually I wrote about that um, for one of my spoiler articles I did uh, a while ago, actually, with when it first started of like new drag shows to go see, and I went to go see it once as a boy. I, it was a lot of fun, so I need to go back, um, and I would love to be in it. But it's a good, it's a really good show. Yeah. Oh, girl. You know how you said you were OCD about your brows? You're worse. They're cousins. They're not really sisters, they're cousins. That's okay. That's the rule of brows. They're cousins, not sisters. Right. Do you look at the camera real quick. Look at those. Do you yep. see them? Cousins. They're cute, though. They're, <laughs> they're cute. cute. They're, they're cute. cute. You're just going to be a little cunty on one side, which I'm... I'm, I'm okay with. with. So when, I, when I'm going to post that picture later, I'm just like, no, I'm going to look angry. I'm going to look nice. Right. There we go. <laughs> and then just don't look straight forward because you look bipolar. Why do you think all my pictures <laughs> on Instagram are like me going like this? Because one side always looks a little bit different than the other. Doing makeup is hard, everybody. It's like, so hard. You do one, you do one eye, and you're like, "Oh, that looks amazing." And then you do another eye, and you're just like, "What is that?" We're gonna clean them up. So now. it's and that's what it is. You can you can fix almost anything with concealer, almost. Um, Skin problems, acne, uh, fucked up brows, fucked up brows, <laughs> hickeys, everything. Yeah. Um, who would you say are your biggest drag influences? Um. I mentioned her already, but Sunny Seymour for sure is huge for me. So of the New York girls, Sunny Seymour is probably the biggest influence mm. on me. Um, another influence, and she doesn't actually know, you know this girl, but and we have talked about it briefly, her and I, but um, Gloria Swansong. Oh yeah, she's, she's awesome. She, before she was um, the runner-up for So You Think You Drag, she was the winner of Reddit's Lip Sync for Your Life. Yeah. Which I was paying attention to when I was like, sort of flirting with drag and I was obsessed with her. She was so good. Um, and she had a very she has she still has a very like vintage starlet inspired Oh absolutely aesthetic. Yeah. Um which is super cute. God. I feel like I should do something with this brow. Nah, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I think it's gonna be cute. It's gonna be cute. You're just gonna be angry on one side. Um, so that's I'm okay. like a big People deal. People tell me I'm so happy anyway. So My favorite. I love it. I love it. We're gonna make you cunty. My favorite, like, What's like other cocktail. Internationally famous queens. Make another cocktail, lady. She got. She's I thirsty. I'm sorry. She was thirsty. No, we're going with that. You were thirsty. That's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> you know me. I love to make fun of myself on Facebook. Um, so no, seriously. So outside of New York City, even though, and not for nothing, guys. Like, I know I talk about New York City a lot on this whole side of New York City. New York City has some of the best drag in the world. It's so good. Some of the best drag in the world. If you've never seen drag, especially in New York City, you've never seen a drag show, come out and see a drag show. And it's it's just one of those things. It's an, it's, it is. It's an art form. It's one of those things where you hear about it. It's becoming, you know, part of, part of the media now and pop culture. But until you've experienced, like, a drag, it's one of those things where you don't realize how much goes into it until you see a show or talk to a queen and one of the inspirations why I wanted to do this was to get out there just like the effort that we put into it and you know it's not just you know RuPaul's Drag Race that the girls that are like hustling it's right. like, there's so much more to it than that and but like all part of the RuPaul girls like they continually inspire so many queens about it. cheers mm. cheers cheers. cheers cheers to cocktail number two Speaking of Drag Race, these super famous drag queens that inspire me. Um, I have three that I always quote as like super inspiring to me. Willem, Belle Eye, Jinx Monsoon, and Violet Chachki, who are all over the place in terms of like what they do, but like those, if I could have Willem Belle Eye's skills 
on microphone, like his comedy skills. If I could have Violet Chachki's like visual strengths, and then Jace Monsoon's musical. Oh yeah, you, those are like the three components to like drag. Yeah, that's my ideal. Um, and that's really what I I really want to be like someone who's like shady and fun, who can sing her face off and who looks gorgeous. That's my goal. It's you know, good goal. And yeah. I think it's it's very it's very. It's possible. attainable. It's attainable. Yeah, absolutely yeah. attainable. Good work. You should you should always I think. Like, people like to make fun of me, well, not make fun of me, but, like, people like to be like, oh my god, you're so positive, oh my god, you're so, uh, what do you call it? You're a dreamer. I'm a dreamer, but, like, I, I am too, girl. I try really hard to only dream of goals that are attainable. Like, I try, if I, if it's a, if it's a dream that I have, I find a way to accomplish it. Absolutely. And I, make, I make a plan. That's what makes I a successful it. person. Right, right. A hundred percent. Kiss nose, girl. I'm excited. Yeah, it's cute, it's cute. It's gonna be snatched, though. Cause you you do you were like a fishy like you love mermaids and you paint soft. I do paint soft because I don't need to paint hard. My face is already soft. You've got a beautiful bone structure. Well, thank you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna snatch you. It's okay. I'm excited. All about it. I like trying like it's when someone else paints you, you just see yourself in a different light. You know. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, my face can do that. Great. Um. See how small your nose is. Yeah. So if I gonna say. Oh, thank you, Mia. That's so sweet of you. Aww. Come on, making fans. Also, look what Ellie said. She said, having known you for roughly six billion years now, I've never seen you dream about something you didn't make happen. That is an amazing Work. comment to receive. Yeah. Like, seriously. Ellie, you get points for that. Hi, Paul. Paul's watching. Oh, my God. Hi, Hi Paul. Hi, Paul. <laughs> thank you. Oh, stop it, Ramona. You're... <laughs> it's... So, um... I call her my little drag sister, Mona Mirage. She's new, but she has so much potential. And, and I'm so thirsty. proud of her. She's and so she's, hungry. She's hungry for it. She'll get it. Um, Emmy Great, who, who is on Beer Ford, painted us both about two weeks ago for a party that we were co-hosting. And she looked fierce. Yeah, you all look so cool. She looks fierce. And I told her, I was just like, use that and don't get intimidated. Don't get discouraged. Realize that this is how your face can look all the time. Right. Just learn how to replicate it. Right. The fact that your face looks like this now means that this can be your standard. So go for it. And that's why I love painting each other's faces because you just show each other things. You're just like, no, you could do this. And how about that? You know, like I'm, I actually like you with the soft contour. It's nice. It's, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. It makes mm -hmm. you look happy. I, I know I look so happy. It makes you look happy. Maybe that's why everyone likes me, because when I paint, I look happy. In my Instagram photos, I'm always like, mm -hmm. like cut. <laughs> But I'm not. No, she's really not. She's one of the nicest queens I've ever met. Oh. Okay. So now we're going to do your eyes. Okay, I'm ready. I'm really excited. I'm going to go in with, where's my highlight color? Because I want to go in and paint on your eyelid. I like to paint on an eyelid and then do the crease around it. Fair. Because that whole, that... Well, I do that. I usually just, like, white, when I do the highlight, I go up, up, and then just do the whole, like, like a superhero mask. Yeah. That's what I do with highlight. I love it. Um, so speaking about, you know, like, Queen's Potential, what, what, did anyone mentor you coming up into the scene? Did anyone actually, like, say, hey, do this, that, and the third, or were you more of just, like, looking at other people and learning on your own? Um, it, well, so I really, I, t I told you this earlier, I think it's so funny. I, for a while, was making like little Facebook posts with pictures of me where I was doing terrible things while I was in drag. And I was like, adopt Beverly Leslie Sills today and stop her from doing this. Or like, <laughs> adopt Beverly Leslie Sills today and tell her to wash her tights. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, something, something that, because I really wanted that like drag mother experience. I mean, I still do, like, I, I really love having the influence of outsiders because I have so many ideas going on in my brain that sometimes I need someone to be like, listen, do this. Shut the fuck up and do this because you're good at it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, but it never happened for me. The person, the person who probably helped me the most was Emmy Great because we had become friends and she was like, listen, you're terrible at makeup, let me help you. Um, so yeah, not many people have helped me with my acts, which is sort of, or with my... Well, because you are genuinely a performer. Like, that's where, that you were, like, a trained performer. So, and I guess you didn't really need that much help with that other than from someone else who's a trained performer, which is probably why you idolize Stephanie Seymour, because she's amazing. 100%. Um, but no, I totally get that. Yeah. 
and that's sort of where I'm at now is like right now I like have gotten to this point where I really need to refine what I do mm -hmm. make it real clear make it real special so I'm trying to find somebody to like bounce ideas off of for that because I, I want this I'm a hungry bitch and I could stumble around for three years or I could ask someone else's advice who knows better than me yeah you know I completely agree and that's why I look to the older more seasoned queens just like okay I see that I see that I and if I'm if I'm friends with you yeah I'll ask for your opinion Fuck yeah you better you better you know like that's how you improve so what was it that made you want to go into opera I started so when I was in high school I really wanted to sing and my parents were like no you're a terrible singer join band so I joined band, but I still wanted to sing. And I was hanging out with all the choir kids, and I loved the choir kids. And so finally one day I auditioned for choir, and I got in, and it was great. And then I auditioned for a musical. I was a junior. No, I was a sophomore when I auditioned for this musical. And I was called back for the lead in the musical up against a freshman. Wow. And the freshman got it. And I was livid, so I was like, I'm going to take voice lessons, I'm going to take acting lessons, I'm going to come back next year, and no one's going to be able to take me. And so I found a voice teacher who taught classical music. And we started, to, and you should take classical voice lessons if you want to sing, period, because that's like the basis for everything. But when we started singing, he was like, you shouldn't just sing, like, you should sing opera. You should sing opera, I hear it in your voice. Mm. And so I see outside opinions. Sometimes you just never know. You need them sometimes yeah. to like focus you on what you're actually really good at. And so I, because they see that they see a potential. They're just like, no, I heard that. Like one of my best friends, uh, Jen, she always sang when we were uh, younger, and everyone was like, you should sing, you should sing. Finally, she started going for like cabaret and stuff like that, and she was doing a voice lesson, and her voice coach just just like kept going higher on the piano to see how she sang. Got so high, and she was just like, how are you going that high? Like that needs to be a thing. Yeah. And you, sometimes you need someone who knows what they're talking about to actually validate your talent. 100%. You know? 100%. Um, yeah, so they told me to sing opera, and I just, like, I just, like, dove in. I dove in hard, you know? Would there be any acting coaches who would be useful for drag? I mean, it means, um, well, that's interesting, because, like, I feel like acting is, is a very broad thing. Like, if you're a trained actor, you can definitely use that in drag, especially in performances. Right. And like one of the things is like I'm I don't I don't sing. I live sang once and I'm working on it because I actually do want to live sing more. It's not gonna be my main gig, but it, it'll be part of it. But one of the things that helped me in performing was when I was younger, I wanted to be I wanted to do dance and singing, all that kind of stuff. And my parents uh you know, kind of directed me away from that. They like pick a more solid career. And I was a little disappointed, but what they couldn't stop me from doing was taking electives in those things. Yeah. So for gym class, I was taking dance, and electives, I was taking theater, and I was in choir, and so even though it wasn't like formal training, those electives that I took actually helped, especially the acting in theater. So like, when I perform, it is acting, you're telling a story, and I, I value those lessons that I learned in high school and college, even though I've never been actually you know, paid someone to train me. And like now moving forward that I actually would use those skills in my career, it's something that I would definitely consider. Yeah. But yeah, acting is so much part, because it's one thing to go out there and belt a song. You can, anyone can go up there, any singer go out there and belt a song. It's one thing to go up there and tell a story with a song, you know? And it's all about facial expression, body movements, hand gestures. Understanding, understanding psychology, like how the emotions yeah. work for these Absolutely. people. So, yes, acting would definitely be helpful in the drag community, no matter if they knew you were acting for drag or not. Just I mean, that's, basis of acting. When you look at really successful girls, Britta Filter, acting career beforehand, Alexis Michelle, acting career beforehand, Sutney Seymour, acting career beforehand, like all, you know what I mean? Bob the Drag Queen, a good actress. Not necessarily an acting career, but a good, but actress. A good actress. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Real fucking good. Like, you have to be able to pull that off. I saw her again, Bianca, Bianca Del Rio, not an amazing actress, but, but a good actress. A good, I thought it was cute. Willem Belli, real good actress. Real good actress. Stole that fucking show, girl. Real good actress. Yeah. So, you know, and it comes sometimes from just a place of passion, something that you really, really care about, something that inspires you, and you're just like, okay, I found that fire. Let's let's do it. That's what drag did for me. Bob was there. For, Bob was a theater youth major, Caroline points out. See, Thank and you, again, Caroline. no, hello, that was that was me. I, high school and college, that's when I was taking, like, theater classes and stuff like that. Cheers. 
Cheers to theater. school and theater acting classes. Like, work. Lip syncing is different than acting. That's actually a talent. Work. Just saying. And like, one of the things is because I'm a lip sync queen, I used to lip sync for years as yeah. a little kid in the mirror, in the shower. I knew right. that. And sometimes I have a song, but it was more about performing the song than singing the song. And right. that's why I can lip sync. It, it comes, again, hidden passions that you never knew that you would use. Oh, Paul Vader. <laughs> Tell it to Mariah. The, my best favorite thing about Paul Vader is he's hashtag selectively shady. Selectively shady. That's so funny. He is, though. You've heard it. No, it's true. It's amazing. No, I love it. I'm cutting your eye shape out. The okay. heart. Um... Cause you know me, I'm a, I'm actually, before I was a musician, I was a, a, a visual artist for like most of my life. I started painting when I was like three. I used to draw. I, I, I was in middle school, Newsday had a drawing competition, yes. like um, citywide. And they, it was like all the schools within the five boroughs, they had like six drawing categories and they picked 30 winners out of all the schools and one of my pictures got picked. And I was the only one in my school that got picked amazing it was because there was this other girl that really drew well like this like really really smart like Japanese girl like really really like really drew well yeah and so we were in art class I'll never remember this I'll remember this forever um, my art teacher was just like so we got the we got the newsday results in and there was actually a student from our school that got selected and we were like oh, that's awesome it was just like and it was in this class because it was like a school thing like everyone went for it yeah and it was in this class so everyone immediately thought it was her and she was like, I have the drawing, like, right here. And I was just like, well, it's hers. She lifted it up, and it was mine. Amazing. It's one of, like, my biggest successes in life ever. And I was, like, in seventh grade. It was, it was, it was cool. And it just, like, you just, you never, and I drew, one of the categories was sports. And I drew a picture of people figure skating. A dual figure skating with a guy yeah. lifting up a girl in a crowd with, like, judges giving scores. Yeah. And, like, it was, it was cute. It was, my mother still has it. And the newspaper clipping. Um... But, you know, you just never know when you will use a useless talent number 24, you know, and it happens, it happens. I love it. You peaked, Bella. You peaked. That's so rude. <laughs> so rude. Um, I think I'm ready to move on to eyeliner. Ready when you are. Do you have a liquid liner that you prefer to use or we use mine on you? Use yours, yeah. Okay. Because if it works well, I, I want to know what it is. Um, it's okay. I use mine on you. Well, I mean, mine isn't liquid, mine is a pen. But it, I guess it's liquid still. Yeah, I use the Revlon Colorstay Liquid Liner because I really like their, um, fuck, what do you call it? Their foundation. But, um, the liner's only okay. okay. Um, where is it though? If you can't find it, you can use mine. There we go. She got it. She here. I'm excited. I am excited. I haven't looked, I've, I've only seen it through like the screen, so I haven't really seen anything. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Okay. Well, actually, let me ask you. Ask me a question so I can talk. Let me ask you, um, what has been your biggest hurdle in your drag career? Oh, girl. Okay, shut your eyes. Um, my biggest hurdle as a drag queen is probably this is gonna sound so stupid I think I think my biggest hurdle so far has been myself like me being We're our own worst enemy me being afraid me not being able to focus me being too lazy to put the work in sometimes you know yeah like people have been super supportive of me people have come to my shows people have hired me to do things but sometimes I get in my own goddamn way. And I think that's like true for most of my life. Like I've always thought that I have so much potential and if I could just like fucking, I don't know, figure my brain out and like turn it the right direction, I would accomplish so much. Okay, let's see. Okay, she cute. Um, what have you, what are, what are some of the ways that you have overcome that hurdle? Um, yeah, you're good, you can look. I have, actually need a little more liner here, it goes away when you open your eyes. I have worked really hard to learn how to manage my time 
I'm still learning that, but I'm but it's like my biggest thing is that I'm working to like manage my time because that's super important. I'll go back down, made it thicker. I work really hard to. I mean, I constantly ask people about what I'm doing, like regulars who come to my shows or friends of mine who've seen me. Like, what do you think of this act? What do you think of me singing this? What do you think of this lip sync? You know, because outside voices help focus you and they help clarify. Absolutely. Not all the time, though. You have to know when someone's being helpful and when someone's being a little shady. You also need to, with, like some people, Emmy, great. <laughs> like to give you advice when you don't fucking ask for it. And you should not listen to people, I think, who give you advice when you don't ask for it. I will take that with a grain of salt because there's sometimes, sometimes you don't notice, you don't know that you need advice there. Yeah. You know? Adriana Trenta. Um, but it's one of those things where it's all about how it's given. It's how it's given and for the purpose of what. Are they doing it to be shady or are they doing it to be helpful? Like genuinely helpful. It all is about execution, I think. That's true. Like one, Sutton Seymour, so the reason I auditioned for So You Think You Can Drive was because Sutton Seymour said, what do you want out of this career? And I told her and she said, you need to do, you know, you need to do these competitions. You need to do, like she told me what, and I didn't ask her. You know? Right. But I knew that she knew what she was talking about, and the way she said it was not like, oh, you're not doing this, girl, you need to be doing this because you're not doing this. It was like, hey, if you want this, here's how to get it. Well, it was funny because I've known Sutton for a while, way before I started doing drag. My first drag debut ever was at her show. Right. And when she found out that I was into thinking drag, her and I had a very long conversation about the things that I should be trying, the things that I should be doing. And every week, she would be in my head, be like, am I pushing myself, be doing whatever. And that's why I loved the judges' critiques because it helped me refine. It helped me figure out the things that no one else was going to tell me. Right. You know? And Look. I was grateful. Okay. Okay. This is cute. She's painting a palette. You can look up. It's not to do it under you. Um. Yeah. So what's, what would be like we talk, we've talked about goals and attainable dreams. What, stepping outside of the attainable dream logistics, because, you know, we have the, if you could accomplish anything in drag or do anything in drag, logic aside, what would it be? I would sing on the Met stage, the Metropolitan Opera stage, I would do a female role in drag. That's amazing. That's like, that's like dreams. And if I get to a point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I think this might be attainable, I'm gonna fucking go for it because I want it so bad. That's awesome. That's amazing. And there are lots of roles that I could, like, I could, like, yeah, there are, like, serious roles that I want to do, but there are lots of comedic, operatic roles for a female. No, it, it, it's true. There's so many comedy operas. Yeah, I'll go. I could see you in Barbara of Seville. I would love to be Barbara Seville. <laughs> I, oh my god, I would love to be Barbara Seville. <laughs> um, hold on. There's an aria, I gotta think of it. Ma. Yeah. But I, yeah, that aria that she does. I know. I'm yeah. thinking, there's, it's been a while, but I know I know the characters know this. Like, I could see you in that. It's so beautiful. It's like so much fun. Oh, Clown White, perfect. Oh, thanks, Chip. <laughs> She's not done yet. We're, we're, work, we're working on it. It'll get there. Where's, I've gotta get my, is he reading me? Or is it saying you're beautiful? Say we're beautiful. Well, you're the one with the full finished face, so when, whenever anyone says that we're beautiful, I mean they're talking about you, which is to my credit, because it's my fault that you're beautiful. Okay. I'm giving you, I'm opening your eye up a little bit. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I have very small eyes for drag. Like, I just have like petite almond-shaped eyes. That's why I paint big yeah. like that to give me like the Disney princess eye. I don't paint big my eyelid, I paint big underneath my eye to open it up. I'm the opposite, because I need to draw my eyes up. What well, we're doing, you're getting underneath that eye, girl. I love there. it, I love it. It's a little messy. You know what I've realized? I want to lift your palm. Painting, <laughs> please feel free. Uh, Painting other people is like, it's like really hard. Yeah, it's not easy. It's one of those things where it's like, actually in my last video I discussed this, where it's like, not only is painting someone else really hard, having someone else paint you, relinquishing that control over your face and being yeah. like, all right, I'm at your mercy, but... It's difficult. It's scary. I like it, though. Okay. I'm okay with where it is right now. Okay. 
Girl, I was at that point before, before I added like the the, the black and stuff like that. Once yeah. you do like, it's, don't worry about it. What color hair are you wearing tonight? Depends what color you want to put on me. Well, I was gonna, I'm gonna leave your eye neutral. Okay. And give you like a bold red lip probably. But Great. I, about your brows, what I'm gonna fill in them with. Do a black root, because I'll either wear I'll either wear that peach wig that I have or the the one where I, my white hair with the black root. Work. You know what we're gonna give you? What? We're gonna give you my my graphic brows. Come on, graphic brows. Oh yeah, the I've always wanted those, so yes, do it. Are you the, comb, the combed brows. Y'all yeah, girl, they're my favorite thing. I noticed. So it's like with makeup aesthetics, you can do all kinds of effects, do all kinds of things. People do realistic brows, neon brows, no brows. So Beverly likes a graphic brow where you can like see, my friends call them the wood grain brows where you can see, I'll do them right here on camera, you can see individual hairs in the brow as it goes back. And on stage it looks really realistic. Up close it doesn't. Up close it looks like an you illustration. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? But like on stage it looks really cool. And I'm obsessed with it. You know who does it really well? Who? Sasha Velour. Is that where you got the inspiration from? Yep. Um, Sasha Velour, when, when um, she came back from Russia this summer, she started doing like these like thin hairs, essentially. She used to draw like big thick brows that were like one solid line of black. And when she came back, she started doing like hairs in her brows to make them, to keep the shape and like to keep it graphic, but to make it a little more refined and elegant. And I'm obsessed with it. It's so beautiful on her. Um, oh, now I have to do it backwards. I'm left-handed. It's weird. No, left I had that when I was painting here before. This brow's easy. That one wasn't. That's why this brow is a little bit higher than the other. <laughs> <laughs> and by a little bit, I mean oh, it's okay. Also, and I shave my brows off, so I don't have this trouble. But for girls who cover their brows with glue or with prosade or whatever, having sort of graphic brow draws attention away from the texture of your. Covered brow. Yeah. And so for those who don't know, Prosade is a industrial brand adhesive that not only covers, but like puts shit on your face. For Halloween, I did a Poison Ivy look. And I did it whatever, but I love those those leaves that Uma Thurman has in the Batman Returns, as bad as that movie is. Oh, and I it love was, it so much, though. It's one of those movies you just so watch. I, I I do. It's, it's not a good movie, but we watch it. Right. And so I had the leaves, and it was just like little layers of prosade gluing them onto my face. And I took them off, and it was just like, <laughs> like <laughs> poison ivy is why Beverly is a redhead so often. I love poison, I love poison ivy so you much. You saw a poison ivy look, didn't you? I did. I loved it. I was a little jealous because you did it first. But I'm not really a cosplay girl. Well, that's why I, so many people have been like, "You should do more cosplay. You should do more cosplay." You're really good at it. You're really good at it. I, I think I'm gonna this year. This year will be a year of more cosplay. Yeah. I've always wanted to do, I've always, you know, my, one of my, actually one of my goals now this year is to go to Comic-Con and drag and cosplay. I love it. That would be fun. I, we should, oh my god, can we go? Yes. We should do it. We I need should, to get a costume together. We, we need to do something like coordinating. Oh, yes. Like, either like Marvel or DC or like Powerpuff Girls or like what something. What if we did Poison Ivy, well, you already done Poison Ivy, I don't know if you want to repeat it. What if we did, what if we did Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, because they were like, I'm down. Tight. I'm down to do that. I have the because I have the poison. I can even lend you the poison ivy outfit. Yeah. But because I have, oh, I have those those green those green glitter boots, girl. So good, so good. Do you want to look at your mug real quick? Look what she's doing, you bitches. Looks great. Though so she's giving, she gave me like, bitch eyebrows. I love it. Yeah, you look cunt. You look cunt. I'm also gonna go and this is my favorite eyeshadow. It's um blackout by Urban Decay. And I like to go over the... I love that you use all Urban Decay because I've always wanted to be a queen that like swears by Urban Decay because I love their stuff. Yeah, their stuff is really good. It doesn't blend as easily. I've had trouble with that. But they're bold. But they're bold like and the pigmented. Bold. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm just going over and like... What size shirt are you? I'm a size 10 in men's and a size 10 in women's. How's that possible? I don't fucking know. But like seriously. She has a metamorphic foot. I'm crazy. Because um, those boots, they're... They're an 11, but they're not an 11 wide. They wouldn't hurt your foot. Why oh, bet I can wear them? Yeah, absolutely. They're fierce. Yeah. I would totally lend them to you if you wanted to put together a Poison Ivy look. Because I, I would actually, and I would do the Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. We could also have learned something different. I mean, like, I have a lot of things that I love. I've always wanted to do Sailor Moon, 
You did um, Sailor Moon. I did, did Sailor, Sailor Neptune. Jupiter. Yeah, that was yeah. that was our, that was that was our, that's our. <laughs> we have a picture like where we're making out in drag. I'm I'm Laura Croft and she's Sailor. When she I her. looked at her and I was like, this is a fan service moment waiting to happen. We have to make out and make this like. It real. was funny because we had both won that night. She won the performance. I run the runway, and people are taking picture of us. She looks at me. She's like, we need to kiss. I was like, okay. And we just did, and we got like the most epic picture out of it. It's, it's so amazing. good. I'm really glad that she um she just went with it for me. Of course. You look cute. Thanks. I like this. I'm gonna put. Where's your mascara? I don't want to use my mascara on you. Um, but I want to do your.